One of the biggest battlegrounds in marriages today is money. And until that is settled, a marriage might never be settled. My money is my money, but your money is our money. I also used to say that. But then I had this fundamental change in my perception about marriage, in the way I view marriage. And that was what changed everything for me. And that's why in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the ways through which finances can be managed properly within the confines of marriage based on God's biblical principles. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Wendy Zeal let's get right into okay, it okay so before we get into the whole finances and marriage how to manage this and how to manage that first of all i would like to dwell a little bit on the concept of trust some people actually just go into marriage without fully understanding what it entails because it's not it's not a child's play this is you putting your life in the hands of someone and saying just take it I don't know what the future is going to look like, but I trust you and I believe you that together we can get to that place of fulfillment. This is what marriage is all about. So the first ingredient should be trust. Before you say I do to that lady, you should fully be convinced in your heart and have good trust for her. And before you say I do to that man, that handsome man, you should like have trust in your heart for him to make the ultimate commitment. If there is sufficient trust in a marriage relationship, then the issue of who spends what or who provides what or who gives what should not even come up in the first place. Now, don't get me wrong. I am a big believer of a man should be a provider. I always say that if you're watching me for the first time, maybe you can check out my previous videos. I always say that a man should be a provider. I believe that. I believe it's sexy. Like a man should just provide for me. Who doesn't want to relax and be taken care of? But then I also believe that somewhere at the back of your mind, you should also believe that someday maybe this man might not be able to give me his 100% and I should be able to step in and, you know, just give something. Because marriage at the end of the day is about pouring into each other. You pour into him, he pours into you. Like they say, it's for better or for worse. Even though today in some of the Pentecost, churches they have changed it to for better and for best but then sometimes you have to face the realities of life life is full of uncertainties when you go into marriage with that man everything might just be rosy 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 he has everything figured out along the line he might lose his money or maybe he might make a wrong investment that will cost him his money and cost him the comfort he's able to provide to you so having that mentality and that mindset that sometimes i need to pour into him as well would also help to strengthen the bond in a marriage relationship okay with that being said let me not go into too much preaching <laughs> now to the concept of finances in marriage how can we manage money in marriage who should bring what and who should not bring what the bible says that a man will leave his mother and his father and cleave unto his wife and they too will become one flesh so the whole concept of marriage is about oneness. Finances becomes one. Ambition even becomes one. Goals and objectives become one. Because if, for example, my husband has a dream of maybe building a company or building a certain kind of company, I should also be able to support him and support that dream because that is what marriage is all about. As long as what he's doing is legit. This issue of people always doing the 50-50 thing, saying strictly it has to be 50-50, I don't know, but there is this popular notion in our society today. I don't know if it's about the work society you know everybody wants to people are coming up now to air their opinion which is not a bad thing but i listen to a lot of podcasts and i hear sometimes i hear people saying it has to be 50 50 if she's not bringing a 50 percent of everything then i'm not going into that marriage if he's not bringing a 50 percent of everything then i'm not going into that marriage i think that we are getting it all wrong so if you're going to become one with your husband if you're going to become one with your wife then you're going to become one in everything in your finances in everything my husband shouldn't be saying let's go right and i'm saying no i want to go left marriage is about oneness we move together the formula in marriage is one plus one is equal to one in mathematics we all know that one plus one equals two right but in marriage one plus one is equal to one so it means oneness 
one surname, one finances, one vision, one goal. I'm going to share with you how I and my husband do it in our family. Now, this is not to say that this is something that you have to follow. This is just my belief and my experience and we have been able to figure out what works for us and we're sticking to it. So that is not to say that you have to, you know, follow in that part. When it comes to finances, you just have to find a way and find what works for you. Because like they say, what rocks my boat might sink your ship. If I get that quote correctly, we have three major accounts. First one is a savings account and it's a joint account. That is where we put money away for investment, for business, for future and for the family. All right. And then the two other accounts are individual accounts, my personal account and his personal account. In this account, we just put away money where you can, you know, easily access funds. For example, if I want to go to the salon, I shouldn't be waiting on my husband to equally authorize for me to get funds just to get my hair done or to buy something off the street or to just you know or to do some errands in the same vein he shouldn't also be waiting on me for permission to be able to get a haircut or to just get some snacks or anything so these are personal individual accounts where we just have some funds in it so that if i have anything i would like to do i just go ahead and do it and same applies to him even though yes marriage is all about oneness and i totally totally believe that and i follow that but then we are different individuals and sometimes you also want to maintain a little bit of our individual individuality so these are the three basic accounts we operate on in my own marriage and some people even go to the extent of opening individual accounts for their children just to you know put away something every now and then for them in preparation for their future so here comes the big question some people will ask but what if i'm the only one making all of the money should i also split it into all of this account even though i'm the only one going to work making all of the money and bringing all of the income to the family the answer is yes, most certainly. And I know this might not sit well with a lot of people. But one thing in marriage is that you can almost not predict who is going to provide for the family for the longest time. All right. Just like the life we live is very uncertain. You don't know what's going to happen the next day. So that is the way it is with marriage. I'll take myself, for example, before I got married to my husband, I was working and I was earning my own money. Even one year, getting to two years into the marriage, I was still working until I had to just quit my job because now the babies were coming and I had to just focus on that for the time being. I didn't really, really stop working, so to speak. I just stopped a nine to five job. I still do businesses every now and then like drop shippings online that gives me little money but the major money that comes into the family comes from my husband so basically here there is no argument if you're going to follow what the bible has said about marriage where he says that the two shall become one so it means that in light of everything they are becoming one so this is regardless of who is making the money regardless of who is going to work and who is bringing in all of the money the finances, the pocket of the family has actually become one. So this is what works for us. And it's not to say that you have to apply it in your own marriage. You need to find a way, find a common ground where you'll be able to stand and have an agreement. Like I said in the beginning of this video, if the money matter is not settled, somehow the marriage might never be settled. All right, so you need to find a common ground. And for us, our solace is in the Bible. So we take what God has said because he is the originator of marriage. He is the one that has brought out this institution and said, okay, yeah, people, you could not come marry. Following the manual provided by the manufacturer of a product, I think is the best way to be able to enjoy that product, if you know what I mean. If you have trust for your partner, if you have trust for your wife, if you have trust for your husband, regardless of who is making the money in the family, you will not have issues issue of maybe putting it together in one account or being scared that she's going to run away with my money or what if i wake up the next day and she has squandered all of my money and leave us with nothing okay so that is just my view about the whole concept of money and marriage i hope you found value in this video if you do give it a like and also check out these videos on the screen and i'll see you there